okay guys let's take an application on Cornish method and uh, as we have discussed in the last video so the problem is that z1 z2 z3 these are the three vertices of an isosceles triangle right angled at z2 find the relation among z1 z2 z3 so you can see that i have already drawn the diagram out there like this is the real axis this is the imaginary axis this is the horizon and the three vertices of the triangle are z1 z2 and z3 so these are the three vertices of the right angled isosceles triangle with the right angle containing vertex is z2 so this is 90 and as you know that it is an isosceles triangle so this two side lengths has to be equal so the other two angles should be 45 now i have already assigned this direction of the rotation here to be clockwise and here to be anti-clockwise so let us proceed with first taking z3 to be the pivotal point so if you take z3 to be the pivotal point and uh, so we can assign this two vector to be merging at the pivotal point okay so let's um, put the direction in this way okay so i put the direction of this vector in this way and the direction of this vector towards the pivotal point so now let's apply rotation about the pivotal point z3 so you can see that if i consider this to be the pivotal point and the direction of rotation is clockwise then this will be our initial position and this will be our final position so we'll be writing the rotation statement as the final that should be z3 minus z1 divided by the initial that should be z3 minus z2 this is equal to modulus of z3 minus z1 divided by modulus of z3 minus z2 into e to the power minus i pi by 4 okay because the rotation is in the clockwise sense so the angle should be taken as minus pi by 4 now here one interesting thing is that you can check out that this particular quantity is nothing but if you tally with the figure mod z3 minus z1 represent the distance of this vector and mod z3 minus z2 represent this distance between of this particular length of this particular vector so we are basically interested about hypotenuse by base of the triangle so this is hypotenuse this is base so the ratio should be equivalent to sec of pi by 4 okay and as you know that sec of pi by 4 is root 2 so this is root 2 into e to the power minus i pi by 4 that can be safely written and uh, next let us apply the rotation about the point z1 to be a pivotal point so you can see that i have taken the angle of rotation to be in the anti-clockwise direction so the angle is plus pi by 4 and since i am going in this particular direction so let us put the directions of the vector like this that is merging away from the um, <clears throat> or emanating from the pivotal point so this is the pivotal point so both the vectors should be having their tail at the pivotal point so this is one vector and this is another vector and this is my initial position and this is going to be my final position because i'm going in the anti-clockwise direction so again we can write down that the final position that is z3 minus z1 divided by the initial position that is z2 minus z1 and that will be equivalent to z3 minus z1 mod divided by z2 minus z1 mod into e to the power iota pi by 4 okay because now the angle of rotation is in the anti-clockwise direction so it will be taken as positive and again the interesting thing is happening here that mod z3 minus z1 by mod z2 minus z1 that is the length of the hypotenuse divided by the length of the uh, perpendicular so this can again be said to be cosec of pi by 4 okay because it is hypotenuse by perpendicular and cosec pi by 4 is again root 2 so it will be root 2 e to the power i pi by 4 so this is your equation number 1 and suppose this is your equation number 2 so if you multiply the two equation we can crack the condition so multiplying the two equation 1 into 2 so we can easily write down z3 minus z1 square divided by z3 minus z2 into z2 minus z1 that will be equal to root 2 into root 2 that is going to be 2 and e to the power minus i pi by 4 and e to the power i pi by 4 you can see that when we will be multiplying they will be cancelled out by each other 
so we are getting a relation something like this so if you just open it up it is going to give us z3 square plus z1 square minus 2 z1 z3 and on the RHS if we open up it is going to give us 2 z2 z3 minus 2 z2 square minus 2 z1 z3 um, plus 2 z1 z2 so we can write down the final condition to be z1 square plus 2 z2 square plus z3 square is equal to 2 times z1 z2 plus z2 z3 so this is the condition for an, a right angled isosceles triangle with the vertex z1 z2 z3 thanks a lot Bye-bye.